So let's formalize this method of estimation a little bit, going over once again the sampling assumptions. Yes, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm going to be really annoying this uh, course. We have a simple random sample which is big enough so that the central limit theorem applies, so a few hundred perhaps, so that the probabilities for the sample mean or the sample percent are roughly normal. In other words, if you imagine all possible samples and you plot all of their means, that histogram looks roughly normal and you know that that's going to be the case if your sample is large, regardless of what the population looks like. But the sample is still small enough relative to the population that you, uh, your correction factor is roughly 1 and you're not worrying about that in your standard errors. That's the typical situation in statistics. And so we're going to try now estimating the parameter that is the population mean or a population percent uh, by an interval. And why an interval? Because the basic idea is you've got a number that is unknown that you're trying to estimate. So you start out with what you see in the sample and then you give yourself a bit of room in both directions. Estimate plus or minus wiggle room. That's the standard way of making um, an interval estimate for a parameter. And formally, what do you do? Well, if you are trying to estimate a population mean, then you will start with the sample mean and go a few standard errors for the sample mean on either side. How many standard errors? Well, if you want an approximate 95% confidence interval for your unknown population mean, then you will start at the sample mean and go, yes, you guessed it, two standard errors on either side. Uh, you can write exactly the same statement for population percents. If you're trying to estimate a population percent, then if what is called a 95% confidence interval starts with the sample percent in the center and it goes two standard errors of the sample percent on either side. Where is this two coming from? Because the area under the standard normal curve between minus two and plus two is 95%, as you remember. So what if I change this level of confidence? Just use the normal table. So if I asked for 80% confidence, then you would need the point that has 80% of the area uh, between, you would need the z so that the area between minus z and plus z is 80%, and that's just about 1.3. And so if I asked you for an 80% confidence interval, then you would go 1.3 standard errors on either side exactly the same construction, you just change how many standard errors you walk on either side of your center depending on the level of confidence that you want. And you can see shorter interval, right? You're walking less on either side, less confidence. So what exactly does confidence mean? Let's try and make this a little more precise and I'm going to first do an example of a calculation and then we are going to do a justification for what exactly is going on here. So first, this is jargon. Construct an approximate 95% confidence interval. Sounds very impressive but all it means is estimate in a sensible manner. And so here we go. I've got a simple random sample of 625 households in a city. The average income is 63,000 in that household and the SD is 40,000. And I'm saying construct an approximate 95% confidence interval, which you know is a long way of saying estimate. Estimate what? The average annual income of households in the city. Now, if somebody asks me to estimate something, the first thing I do is check do I know it already? In which case, I'll just tell them what it is. Do I know it already? I do not. There is a 63,000, which is an average, but it's an average of just these 625 households, not all of the households in the city. And so I don't know that number. And so if I go about checking my assumptions, the first thing I'm going to check is that I actually don't know that number, so it makes sense to ask me to estimate it. Can I estimate it? Well, that depends on the kind of sample that I have. And yes, I have the right kind of sample. I have a sample which is a simple random sample. I know how to handle that. 
625, nice and big, central limit theorem is going to apply. Um, in a city, which is going to have considerably more than 625 households, uh, and that's our agreement, that if I don't give you a population size, you can assume that it's large enough. And so my sampling assumptions are justified. By the way, many of you will have noticed that if I just look at these incomes, they aren't normal. Two SDs below the average and you're hitting negative incomes, you know income distributions are rarely normal, but what is normal here? It's probabilities for the sample average. We have 63,000, we could have got 63,100, we could have got 64,000, we could have got 62,000, we could have got any number of sample, different sample averages. If you plot the histogram of all of those, that histogram is going to be roughly normal because you have a large sample size and that's the magic of the central limit theorem. It doesn't matter that you're starting with a nasty distribution. All right, so what am I asked to do here? I am asked to estimate the unknown average income of households in the city. If you had to give me one number as your estimate, you would say 63,000. You'd be off by a standard error for 95% confidence. You're going to go two standard errors on either side, so the calculation is straightforward. 63,000 plus or minus two standard errors for the sample average. Sigma, the population SD, divided by root sample size. I don't have the population SD, so I am going to put in the sample SD. And I know that this is not going to be very far away from what I want. So 63,000 plus or minus two lots of 1,600. What's 1,600? It's the SE for the sample average. It shows roughly how far off this sample average is from the unknown population average. And so in the end, if I work out my interval, it's 59.8 to 66.2. And what is that interval doing? It is saying that I think that that unknown population average, that unknown mu, is in this range somewhere. And I'm about 95% confident, confident that that happens. Um, if I wanted 68% confidence, so not a lot of confidence at all, 68% confidence, what would have changed? I'd have walked one standard error over instead of two, so I'd have got a shorter interval. 63,000 plus or minus just one lot of 1,600 would have given me a 68% interval for those of you who remember your normal curve facts. So this interval is an interval estimate for the unknown population mean. That is all it is doing. And for a little justification of what is going on, recall that the central limit theorem says that the sample mean has a normal distribution. If you plot all of the sample means, then that curve will look normal. Its center will be the population mean, and its spread will be the SE for the sample mean. You're centered at mu and plus or minus sigma over root n. So if you go center plus or minus two measures of spread, you're going to pick up 95% of all of your cases. So in 95% of the samples, the sample mean and the population mean are within two standard errors of each other. And so if we rewrite it, then it is an equivalent statement is that in 95% of the samples, the population mean is within two standard errors of the sample mean. And this is exactly your confidence interval. Start at the sample mean, go two standard errors on either side. And what this observation is telling you is that in roughly 95% of all samples, this method will give you an interval that contains the population mean that you're trying to get at. And so that is the formal definition of we are 95% confident that the method produces a good interval. The confidence is in the method. 95% of the time, it gets the answer right. And to check this out, we are going to use one of the wonderful applets in your textbook. So here is figure 26.2 of your text, and by now you're used to this. And what they're doing is they're taking a box that has two zeros and three ones in it. In other words, it's a population that has two zeros and three ones, so the population percent of ones is 0.6. Average of the box is 0.6, SD of the box is 0.49. How'd they get that? 
the square root of 0.6 times 0.4. You check it out. Okay, so this is the population. Normally, you're not going to know what it is, but for now, you're Taiki. So you know exactly what the population is. From this, you are going to sample and you're going to make a confidence interval for that percent, 60%, percent, 0.6. You're going to make a confidence interval for that. You're going to uh, try to estimate what is the percent of ones in here. And I'm not going to use a sample size of 30. I am going to use a sample size of... Oh, why don't we take a sample size of 300? I don't like to change a lot of digits. And I am going to take 100 different independent samples. And I don't want to go 1.15 standard errors on either side. I want to go two standard errors on either side. Okay? And so of these samples, I'm going to get 100 different intervals. I expect 95 of them to contain my 0.6. Should we do it? Let's do it. All right, so understand these, this picture. Here is your scale. Here is 0 0.6. That is the truth that Taiki knows. And that blue, na blue line is Taiki's line there, 0 0.6. And each of these little green bars, uh, little green math sticks, is one of the intervals. This black dot is the center of the corresponding interval. The green intervals are the ones that cover 0 0.6, the ones that contain 0 0.6, and the red intervals are bad. How many are there? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I expected about 95 of the intervals to be good and 5 to be bad. I've got 93 good and 7 bad. Okay. And so what is the moral of this story? This is a visualization of taking all possible samples. Well, I haven't taken all possible samples. I've only taken 100. Drawing the 100 different intervals that you get from all of these samples. So, you know, if you have 100 people trying to estimate the 0 0.6 that's in the box, they'll get 100 different intervals. And if they follow our process, then about 95 of them are going to get a green interval, which is the good kind, and only about five are going to get a red interval, which is the bad kind. I wonder what's going to happen if I run it again. Um, 94.5% cover. So I think what's happened is that the picture has superposed itself in the next round you have 94.5%, uh, roughly 95% containing the number that you want. And you can play with this to your heart's content. It's a lot of fun. Um, shall I clear this? I will clear this. Um, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a die. Taiki is rolling a die, unknown to all of us. She's rolling a die, average 3.5, SD 1.71. You've seen this before. And she is going to take the average of a sample size of what? Oh, why don't we do 200 this time? And she is going to take 100 samples. And she is going to go box average plus or minus 2 times the estimated standard error. And what is she going to get? Let us see. So she did it. And you know what? 98% of her intervals crossed your 3.5. We were predicting that 95 would. Well, she got 98. Good for her. Um, fair coin. Same sample. Go. 97%. So one bad one, two bad ones. So verging on... 95 and those of you who are sticklers will note that in fact the 95 percent point of the normal curve isn't two it is actually 1.96 to satisfy those people we're going to do 1.96 right here 
and we're going to play the game again. And no matter what, it likes to give me 97%. That's fine. So you can see roughly 95 are going to be good and the rest are going to be bad. And, you know, you're going to be off. As an exercise, you can try and work out how far off you're going to be.